To explain how atoms behave, we need to look inside them. About a hundred years ago, scientists discovered that atoms aren't like little tiny marbles, as they thought, but made of three much, much smaller particles. Positively charged protons and electrically neutral neutrons in their centre, called the nucleus, and negatively charged electrons orbiting on the outside in shells. See our video about how scientists discovered protons, electrons and neutrons at the link in the description. The nucleus is much smaller than shown here in the diagram. If an atom were the size of a football stadium, then its nucleus would be the size of a pea. This means the atom is mostly empty space. And so are you. Even though the nucleus is tiny, it makes up over 99.9% .9 of the atom's mass. That's because protons and neutrons are 2,000 times heavier than electrons, so they don't matter much. In 1913, Henry Moseley discovered that an element's atomic number is always the same as the number of protons in its nucleus. What a coincidence! This is now the modern definition of atomic number. This atom has five protons, so its atomic number is five. This is the number above the element's symbol on the periodic table. Which element is it? Boron. In an electrically neutral atom, the number of positive protons must equal the number of negative electrons so that their charges cancel. So a boron atom also has five electrons. The job of neutrons is to overcome the proton-proton repulsions and to keep the nucleus together. Most boron atoms use six neutrons to stabilise their nuclei. But some can get away with five. The number of neutrons can vary between atoms of the same kind, so scientists give these a special name. Isotopes. So boron has two isotopes. Protons and neutrons both have a mass of about one atomic mass unit, or AMU, or just U, or even the Dalton. They all mean the same thing, which is a bit annoying. Call me old-fashioned, but I prefer AMU. Scientists use this tiny mass unit for atoms, as grams or pounds are too big. Electrons hardly weigh anything, so the atom's mass is just the sum of its protons and neutrons. Both borons have five protons, so its sixth neutron isotope would weigh 11, and its five neutron isotope 10 AMU. Its atomic weight, shown on the periodic table, is 10.8 and is the average of its two isotopes. It's closer to 11 because it's the more abundant one. Neutrons have a big effect on atomic weight but don't matter much in making chemical bonds, which is what we're interested in here. So we'll just look at protons and electrons from now on. Bye bye, neutrons and atomic weights. The first electron shell can accommodate two electrons before it becomes full, while the second shell can accommodate up to eight electrons. It's bigger. 
This is why boron has only two electrons in its first shell and the remaining three electrons in the second shell. Electrons are like guests in a hotel. Here's a normal hotel. And here's the quantum hotel that better shows how electrons fit around an atom. The first floor can take two guests before it's full. The second floor, eight. The third floor, also eight. The fourth and the fifth, 18 each. When a floor is full, a new arrival is sent to the next floor up. This guest on the fourth floor has more energy than the guests below, which she would find out if she jumped. When she lands, the energy she had turns into sound energy. Electrons in higher levels also have more energy, and when they jump down, light energy is emitted instead. This is called a quantum jump. More on that later. The outer electrons have the highest energies and affect the atom's chemical properties most because they come closest to other atoms, so can reach out to bond with them. Scientists call outer electrons valence electrons. So boron has three valence electrons. Imagine we're building atoms one at a time using just protons and electrons and forgetting about neutrons. What's the simplest kind of atom? Hydrogen. How many protons must hydrogen have? One, because its atomic number is one. And it makes sense for the simplest atom to have just one proton. Hydrogen must also have one electron to cancel out the proton's charge. Which shell will hydrogen's electron go into? The first shell, or lowest energy level, as the electron-proton attraction will pull it in as far as possible. The next element is helium, atomic number two, so it should contain two protons. Adding the second proton has changed the hydrogen atom into a helium atom. To be electrically neutral, it must also contain two electrons. Helium has now filled up its first electron shell because it can only take two. The two electrons filling up the first shell explains why there are two elements in the first period. The word period just means row. So there are two elements in the first row. Adding another proton turns the helium atom into a lithium atom, atomic number three. Another electron is also needed, but it can't go into the first shell because it's now full. So it goes into the next lowest shell, the second shell. Lithium has three electrons altogether, but only one is in the outer shell, so it's got one valence electron. Beryllium has four protons and four electrons, but only two are valence electrons. How many valence electrons will boron have? Three. The two electrons in the first shell don't count. The second shell can hold eight electrons, so the second period holds eight elements. Because the second shell is now full, the next electron must start the third shell. This is sodium, and it also starts the third period. 
How many valence electrons does sodium have? One. It's only got one electron in its outer shell. This is the same as lithium above in group 1. Indeed, all elements in group 1 have one valence electron because they all start a new period. How many valence electrons does magnesium have? 2. This is the same as beryllium and all the others in group 2. That's why all these elements are chemically similar, and some are even given family names. We can repeat this for each group and find they share the same number of valence electrons. That's why each is put into the same vertical group. So vertical groups contain elements with the same number of valence electrons. but with a different number of shells. Adding a proton and electron to each turns the lithium, sodium and potassium into beryllium, magnesium and calcium. All belong to group 2 with two valence electrons. With extra shells as we go down. Now let's switch from a vertical group to a horizontal row. Period 3 starts with sodium with 11 protons and 11 electrons. The protons and electrons are hard to see, so we'll just write the number of positive protons and make the valence electron look bigger, as it's the most important. Adding an extra proton and electron one at a time builds all eight elements in period three. The number of valence electrons also increases one at a time across the period. So horizontal periods contain elements with the same number of shells, but a different number of valence electrons. The combination of these two trends, increasing nuclear charge across each horizontal period, and increasing electron shells going down each vertical group, have an all-embracing effect on how atoms behave. They can explain almost all of chemistry. Periodic table trends and how protons and electrons cause them are the topics of our next video.